and review some things that were said. This presentation will be posted tomorrow, um, so you will have access to go back and see it again. So just some other housekeeping for your information for all the parents out there. This presentation was given over the past two advisory periods to the seniors. So the seniors had a choice of, of workshops that they could go to and students who were applying to four-year schools. This was one of the workshops that was available. So your students have probably seen this already. So they're gonna be reviewing the information, but we wanted to make sure that all of you as parents also had this information available to you. So the process of applying to a four-year college can be complicated. It can feel overwhelming at times. So the purpose of tonight's presentation is to walk you through the various moving parts of applying to a four-year school and to tell you what staff members at Lake Braddock will be there to help your student go through this process. So the, the main points of contact to help your students through this process are going to be their high school counselors. Okay, this is something that we do takes up most of our fall, in particular fall going into um, early winter. So we will be spending a lot of time with the seniors going over their applications and how to go through this process. Our role has many parts that we will be doing with your student. As you can see on the screen, we encompass a lot of different aspects of this um, college application process. Tomorrow at, on Friday, the counselors will be sending out sign up geniuses to all of their seniors. This is a time for seniors to sign up for a one on one conference with the counselors so we can begin going over this process with them and make sure we are all on the same page. So at the meetings, when we meet with them, we will begin to review their college lists. We actually started working with them last spring as 11th graders, having them start doing their research to put their list together of schools that they really are interested in. So by now they should have done their research and that list should be narrowed. For most students, they will be applying to anywhere between five to seven schools is kind of the average. So at the meeting, we will begin to go over those lists with the students and let them know what schools we think would be their dream schools, their fit schools, and their safety schools. Just an FYI, the counselors never tell a student not to apply to a school um, because we know that things change from year to year. But during that meeting, as we're going over the list with the students, we will try to be as realistic with them as possible about what their prospects are for getting into the colleges that they are applying to. We also will be there to answer annual, any general questions about the application. We will be running workshops throughout the fall where students will be able to come in during wind time and actually work on their application and go over the questions with us and have several counselors and Ms. Hunter from the Career Center will be there to answer any questions they have about the applications themselves. Our main role as counselors will be to finally submit school records when it comes time for the students to submit their application. So we will be submitting the transcripts, a school profile for Lake Braddock. We will write letters of recommendation if necessary, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in, in the presentation. And we will complete what's called a secondary school report, which we will send with every transcript. Ms. Hunter in the Career Center is also a resource that helps with this, um, especially when it comes to setting up college visits. We have several reps from different colleges that will be coming to the Career Center to meet with students who are interested in their schools. The students know how to sign up for these visits. They sign up through Naviance and they get a pass to come down to the Career Center to meet the college reps. We stress with the students that if possible, it's always good to come down and meet the reps because these are the actual people who will be reading their application when they submit it. So to put a name and a face together before the rep actually reads the application is always good for the student. Those visits started today. I believe we had like four reps come today and they will continue throughout the fall. 
And again, that information is on Naviance. Uh, Ms. Hunter also helps with the four-year process when it comes for, to scholarships and financial aid. She maintains our Lake Braddock scholarship database, which is also on Naviance. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. She will be updating that as the year goes on and adding more and more scholarships as they become available. She also runs a financial aid workshop and a FAFSA workshop to help students and parents fill out the um, application for federal student aid. So she does have a big part in this four-year process. So she is a great resource. So tonight, what we're gonna be talking about, we're gonna go through the college application process and how all the moving parts come together. We're gonna to touch on how do you request the transcripts? How do you request the school records be sent to the colleges that they are applying to? We will also touch on letters of recommendation, both counselor letters and teacher letters. And then finally add some information at the end about financial aid and scholarships. So we need to talk a little bit about what's been going on with the college application process over the last few years. It has changed because of COVID. COVID has definitely had an impact on the way colleges are looking at students. So there's some things you do need to know up front. Um, more and more schools out there have become test optional. So when COVID hit, obviously most schools required taking SATs and ACTs as part of the admissions process. Now, because students were unable to test during that time period, schools began relying more on the student's high school record than actually on test scores. Many of those schools have decided to stay test optional. So one of the things while doing research on schools that you'll be applying to, you need to find out if test scores are still required by the schools that you are applying to. Many schools will not require test scores for admission, but may ask for test scores when it comes to being considered for scholarships. So make sure as you're looking at the information from the individual colleges, you know what the colleges are looking for. They also understand that during the time that COVID was going on for that good year and a half, almost two years, there were a lot less opportunities for students to get involved, apparently, especially at school um, and also within the community as far as community service and getting jobs and things like that. They are taking that under consideration when they are looking at the extracurricular and activity sections of the application. Um, the Common App, which we'll talk about in a little bit, did add an essay question where students were allowed to talk about how COVID impacted their personal life during that time. Um, it's meant really for students that were adversely affected because of things that happened within their families, like family members losing their jobs or um, you know, having a family member pass away because of COVID, that sort of thing. Um, so students can let the colleges know what was going on in their lives during that time. And the, the colleges will take that into consideration when looking at their overall record. And along those lines, Fairfax County has updated the school profile to include an impact statement explaining to the colleges what FCPS did during that time as far as the virtual learning and how the grades were impacted and the choice for some students who decided to um, drop grades off their transcript and just put a P or a no mark in classes that maybe they weren't doing very well in at that time. That will all be explained in the Fairfax County profile that goes out with all of the transcripts. The main resource that all seniors are using this year and parents, you have access to this resource also is Naviance. You can access Naviance through Schoology this is something that the students have been working with since seventh grade um, as far as researching colleges, researching careers, setting goals for themselves. This year, they're going to be using it a lot because there is a lot on Naviance that deals specifically just for seniors, um, primarily signing up for the college rep visits in the Career Center. They're going to use that tab in Naviance to print out their pass to come down to the Career Center. In Naviance, you can also see the status of your transcript. So if you request that your records be sent to a certain college, you'll be able to track that through Naviance when we actually send it out from our office because we record that within Naviance. Um, the scholarship information is there. Like I said, there's a scholarship database. 
that as the year goes on will be get progressively larger as more and more scholarships become available. These are scholarships that are available either just to Lake Braddock students or to any senior in Fairfax County. So that information will be posted. The scholarships can range anywhere from several hundred dollars to several thousand dollars. So we always tell our students that they should check that scholarship page weekly and go through each scholarship and see what they might want to apply for. Some are as simple as doing an application. Some require doing an essay. But for most of them, it's pretty straightforward. And there's a lot of money out there that can be gotten each year if students know where to look for it. All right, so within this process, we have to look at what colleges are still considering when it comes to admission. And most colleges that we've talked to, the reps that we talked to say they are still taking what they call the holistic approach, where they're looking at several different things from a student's background. The primary is still going to be the course selection that the student took over their four years of high school, what was the rigor of that curriculum? How many honors classes? How many AP classes? How many DE classes did the student take? And then what were their final grades in those classes? So those two things are still gonna be the primary things that the colleges are looking for. These other things have kind of taken a back seat in the last few years but are still considered for schools that are requiring test scores. The test scores will still be a part of the um, admissions process. And then the, the reps will start reading the essays and the recommendation letters that the students submit. And then they will also consider any extracurriculars and honors that the student has received throughout their four years. Um, there is one thing that we call the X factor that we really never know every year because it varies by college. That could be something that the college in particular is looking for, but they're not letting the students know that and they don't let us know that. Only they know what they're looking for. And it could be something as simple as they are adding a new major within a certain department and they're looking for students who are interested in filling that major for the first time. Um, it could be a student who has a specific talent in maybe art or music or athletics, something that the, the college is looking for. That's what we call the X factor. And that varies from school to school and from student to student. So the application process has become streamlined um, very much so over the last, I'd say, 10 years compared to when those of us who are adults went through college. You can remember filling out you know, if you were applying to five colleges, you had to fill out five applications and it was always the same information. Um, things have streamlined once everything went online. So your student will be applying in one of three ways. They can use the college's online application portal. So that means actually logging on to the college that they're interested in, going to the admissions page and doing the application on their admissions page and submitting it. Most students will use the Common App and it is exactly what the name implies. It is one application that's accepted by almost 900 colleges and universities in the United States. So students go on, they do the one application that includes all of their information and writing their essays. And then they designate what colleges they want that application sent to. And the third option is doing the coalition application. That application is fairly new. It's been starting to catch on in the last few years. It is not accepted by as many colleges as the Common App. And in many ways, it's different than the Common App because the Coalition App allows for students to actually upload work that they've done during their four-year high school career. So colleges can actually see almost a portfolio of what they have done over four years. So those are going to be the three ways that your student will be applying to a college or university. There are some things about the Common App that we need to point out because the, the Common App does have some very specific things that have to be done. Um, students always need to invite their counselor to their Common App. What that does is it gives us as counselors access to upload all the documents that we need to upload for the student, including their transcript and letters of recommendation and so forth. Um, if we are not invited to the Common App, we cannot upload the documents that the student needs. 
So on the Common App, there's under the co My Colleges tab, there's actually a section called Recommenders and FERPA. That is where the student must put in their counselor's email address. And we, we stress this with the students every year. We do not use the Google email. We do not use the FCPS schools.net email. We use the fcps.edu email. So the students, if they have any questions about their counselor's email, they should see their counselor. But once they put in their counselor's email address, their counselor will get an invite that says that such and such student has invited you to their Common App. And that gives us access to go ahead and upload all the documents that we have to. One thing about that though, if the, the release of authorization, there's a, there's a tab where the students have to click whether they waive their right or do not waive their right to see their, their recommendation letters and any supporting documents. If they pick the button that says, I do not waive my right, the counselor will not be invited to the Common App. So we will not be able to upload documents. The reason for that, and we've talked to admissions officers from all over the country, if a student marks that they do not waive their right, the college feels at that point that the student and or the family have had some sort of influence on the letter of recommendation. So they do not look at recommendations the same way for students who do not waive their right. So we always tell students it's always best to click on the button that says, yes, I waive my right. And that way the colleges know that the recommendation letters are confidential between the counselor and the teacher and the admissions office, that nobody else has been able to see that recommendation letter. Okay. On the coalition, there is a place to invite the counselor, but in Fairfax County, we do not use the, the coalition to upload documents. Um, there's been some issues with security over that. So if a student uses the coalition app, they just have to let the counselor know that, and we will send their documents through Naviance to the school through the, the coalition app. So again, the coalition, they do not have to invite their counselor. We will go ahead and submit the transcript package through Naviance. Okay, so when do we apply? And if the last five years has been any indication, um, students are applying earlier and earlier. So you need to know the difference between these different types of um, application periods. An early decision which there are some schools that still have early decision, not many, but early decision is a binding contract, which means that if you apply to a school early decision and they accept you, you must attend that school. Even if you don't know if you can afford it, even if you don't know anything about your financial aid at that point, you are signing a binding contract. So just keep that in mind. Students can only apply to one school early decision. You cannot apply to multiple schools early decision. Early action, on the other hand, is when a student can apply by an early deadline. Most of those deadlines are November 1st, November 15th time period. You can apply to as many schools as you want early action. You'll hear back sometime late January, early February, but it is not binding. So you can apply to as many schools as you want early action and get your notifications back, and then you can make up your mind which school you want to attend all right so then we have regular decision regular decision most of those deadlines are in the february march time frame so for students who are not in a rush um, to get the application process done they can wait till regular decision if they want there's also rolling decision those are schools that look at the applications as they receive them so you apply to a school as soon as your application goes across the admissions table, the admissions people will look at it, come up with a decision and notify you as soon as it has been reviewed. So some of the bigger schools, um, a school like West Virginia, a school like Penn State, they do use a rolling admission where they let students know pretty much within a few weeks of receiving their application, whether they have been admitted or not. And then there's also priority deadlines. So the priority deadline is usually set up by schools to be considered for scholarships. 
So you might see on a on a website that there's an early decision or an early action, and then there's a priority deadline. And if you want to be considered for scholarships, you need to apply by the priority deadline. So it's important for the students to really look over these admissions pages and know which admission they want to do and when that deadline is. So when this application process starts, there's actually four pieces of material that the student is going to need and eventually is going to become part of their application. Obviously, filling out the application is priority one. So students need to get to work on that right away. That does take some time. It usually takes several hours. And then by the time you add on, um, we're writing the essays and having the essays proofread, hopefully by an English teacher, um, before submitting the application. It could take a couple weeks to get an application done. So they should start on that right away. The second part of information that's needed and it might be needed, it might not be needed, again, depends on the college, are test scores. So you're gonna to have to look to see what schools actually are still requiring test scores. Those test scores need to come directly from either ACT or College Board. Lake Braddock does not get the test scores for the students, so we do not submit them and test scores are not on the transcript. So that has to come directly from the testing service. The third piece of information will be a teacher or counselor recommendation or both, or none at all. Some schools don't require recommendations at all. Virginia Tech is one of those schools that will not even look at recommendations if you send them. So it depends on the school, whether they need a teacher recommendation, counselor recommendation, or both. So that will be very evident on their website when you're looking to see what materials you need to submit. And finally, the students will need to submit their high school record or their transcripts that is sent by us, by the counselors that will go out through our department. And not all of these pieces of information need to arrive at the same time. If you've ever seen what goes on in a college admissions office, you will realize that they are getting tens of thousands, sometimes applications, and they have maybe five, six people working in the office. So information comes in in bits and pieces. So what's important is that the application gets there on time. The other pieces of information can come at a later time because the college admissions offices actually start a file on a student when the application is received. So any other information that shows up later can be added to the file before the admissions committee um, considers them for admission. So another staff member that will be working closely with your students is Ms. Allen. She is our transcript assistant, and you can see on the screen her email, phone number, and the, her times of that she is actually in the office. She will be the one that handles the initial transcript requests and collects the information about sharing records, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. She then lets the counselors know when new transcripts have been requested. And then we began putting the transcripts and the records together for the students. So there's a couple of things that need to be requested when you are thinking about sending transcripts to a school. First, the student must complete the consent for release of student records. Okay, this is a special form that's on the Lake Braddock website. It gives us permission to send your records to the university or college that you are applying to. The second form that must be completed is the transcript request form. This is actually a Google document that a student will do each time they need a, an official transcript sent to a college. That transcript request form actually goes directly to a Google doc, which we can then separate by counselor so we know who has requested transcripts and what their deadlines are. The consent for the release unfortunately is not a Google document, it's a PDF. So the student can bring that into Miss Allen in one of two ways. They can print it out, sign it and bring it into her in the high school counseling office, or you can sign it online and email it to the LBSS transcripts um, address and she will go ahead and log it in the computer. 
So the transcript request form is actually a document that you have to do for each school. Okay, so if you are applying to five, six, seven colleges, you will be doing this five, six, seven times. You also need to do it for any time you need an official transcript. So that could be for a scholarship, that could be for applying for the NCAA if you are an athlete. Anytime you need an official transcript, you must do the transcript request form. <clears throat> we send transcripts either by uploading them to the Common App, sending them through Naviance as an eDoc, or in very rare cases nowadays, mailing them. And it depends on the college or university how they want us to send everything. Same goes for scholarships. We will send scholarship transcripts the same way. It is the student's responsibility to let us know on this transcript request form how they are applying. So whether they are applying early action, early decision, regular, et cetera, or if they're applying to a self-report school, which is something Ms. Carrera will talk about in a minute. So we cannot send any records out to any college or university or scholarship unless we have both of these forms on file, the transcript request form and the consent to share records. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Carrera. She's gonna take over for the second half of the presentation. Hi everyone. So um, you may wonder what's being sent to the schools once your student has completed the consent form and emailed it to or given it to Ms. Ellen, as well as completed transcript request forms for all of the schools that they're going to apply to. Um, what we do is we send a transcript packet and what that includes is a transcript. And on that transcript, there's going to be um, seventh and eighth grade classes of only algebra one and up and world languages if they were not expunged. Um, final grades for ninth grade, final grades for 10th grade, and final grades for junior year. So um, there will be the senior classes, but the cumulative GPA that's on that transcript is going to be from up until the end of your student's junior year. The GPA will be weighted as long as your student has taken at least one or more honors AP or DE class. Um, one of the questions on the Padlet was um, if, if my kid transferred in junior year, like are there classes on the transcript? Yes. So if your student came in as a transfer student, um, then we do a cumulative, cumulative update on those students and we take the courses and the grades from their former schools and put it on their Lake Braddock transcript. And that's what the schools will get. Um, a secondary school report form is also part of this transcript packet. And what that is, is I always describe it to my students as a mini recommendation. So the first part of the secondary school report form um, has some information regarding our school um, and this class itself. So what's the um, class size of class of 2023? What's the highest GPA? What's the lowest GPA? Um, in last year's class, what was the average SAT? What was the average ACT um, and how how do our grades um, get like how do APs and DE classes and honors classes um, get weighted um, 0.5 for the honors and for DE and AP classes it's 1.0 bumps um, and then we also it's kind of like a rating of your students. So this is why we always told our students um, starting freshman year to get to know their counselor because their counselor is going to be able to, or is going to have to complete the secondary school report from on them. Um, and so basically we um, rate your student based on academic promise, academic motivation, um, ac academic self-discipline, uh, extracurricular activities and community um, contributions, uh, personal character and, um, maturity and personal strength, uh, character and personal strength um, and leadership potential. And then an overall recommendation of them. So that's gonna be the secondary school report form. Um, sometimes students will come to us and say, this school, my school wants you to complete their secondary school report form. And we've never come across a school that has denied our secondary school report form. And in fact, um, Lake Braddock's secondary school report form is much more um, detailed than many schools. So. Um, 
your student can give us those forms, but we will be completing the Lake Braddock Secondary School forms for the transcript packet. Um, the Lake Braddock uh, profile has, again, general information about our school, like what our demographics are, um, how many APs and honors classes we have, things of that nature, so that the schools can see um, how, you know, like when they're comparing applicants, they can see what our school looks like and like what we offer in terms of like courses based on another school. Um, uh, colleges know that we are a very competitive um, school um, and same with the FCPS, FCPS profile, same thing. It gives the um, breakdown of, and all the information of all the FCPS um, high schools so they can see what our students are going are, are uh, doing in our school system. And then also another part of the transcript package is um, the council recommendation if it's required. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, okay, so some of your students have already come to us um, with wanting to get a transcript. And so when they come to us wanting a transcript, we will give them an unofficial transcript. And when we they actually meet with us during their senior meeting, we will be giving them an unofficial transcript. And that just means it's the transcript that um, is we didn't sign it and there is no seal on it. When we send out the transcripts to whether we're downloading it on Common App or we're sending it out um, in the mail, anything like that that's coming straight from us going straight to the college is official. And so if it's going through the mail, it's marked with a, uh, our LBSS seal and it has, uh, it's in a sealed envelope, we sign it and it's um, considered official in that nature. Um, the mid-year transcript, um, all of your students, uh, if your student, uh, any, any colleges that your student submitted on the transcript request form, as long as they submit a transcript request from the schools, they will, those schools will automatically receive a mid-year transcript in mid-February. Um, we have students who come to us and say, well, my college wants it in late January. Um, unfortunately, we do not have um, control of when these mid-year transcripts are created. It's created by the county. And once we get them, then we are able to send them out mid-February. And so again, we don't have control over that date. So your student will never be penalized if this college doesn't get the mid-year transcript when they say they want it. Um, they, again, they know when FCPS um, creates their mid-year transcripts. And so um, please know that they're, they will not be penalized for that. And then the final transcript, when your student, um, right before graduation in May, they're going to be expected to complete a senior survey. The reason why it's so important for them to complete the senior survey is because um, one of the questions that's going to be asked of them is what school will you be attending in the fall? And once they tell us what school they'll be attending on the senior survey, we will then be able to know what college to send their final transcript in July. And that happens around July time. So, um, and then it will, it will have the new GPA because it's going to have the senior final grades and then a recalculated GPA based on how they did senior year. Uh, what the transcript package does not include is, since FCPS doesn't rank their students, um, we can't, there's no ranking on there on the transcript at all. So we don't rank our students. Um, and then we also don't provide unweighted GPAs. So sometimes kids will say, well, can you please give me my unweighted GPA? I need to have it for this college. Unfortunately, we are not allowed to calculate unweighted GPAs. Your student, however, can. So if they forgot how to do that, because we did teach them that in ninth grade year um, during the freshman unit, if they forgot to do that, please have them see their counselor and we can very easily teach them again how to, uh, to find their unweighted GPA. It's very easy. Teacher recommendations are also not part of the transcript package. Um, it's just a lot easier um, in order for us to get the transcript packet out if we're not waiting on teacher recommendations. And that's okay. Like as long as the, the student is going to have to make sure that they um, communicate very much so with their teachers so that they're able to get their teachers on board and then also make sure the teachers are submitting their um, teacher recommendations on time. Okay, so I think Mr. Ronaldo touched about, about this already. Basically the three ways that we um, 
mail the transcript packets out is one is through common application, which once again, that's the right, why it's so important for your student to invite us as a recommender so that we can download their transcript packet um, and the schools can pick that up. And then um, another way is if for the non-common app schools, um, Miss Allen, our transcript assistant, is actually the one that sends them out the transcript packet out through Naviance eDocs. Um, and then another way that's, and it's very rare, but sometimes some, some schools still want uh, postage mail. So we send them out through that as well. The way we don't, what we don't do is we don't email them out. And I think some students have already started putting email addresses in the transcript request form. Please have them not do that because we cannot email out transcript packages. Um, we bring this up about being on time because um, submissions being on time because a lot of students I think panic regarding what on time means. So um, if it, as long as your student's transcript package is postmarked by the deadline date, it is on time. So for instance, if your student's application, not application, yes, application is deadline is November 1st, we as counselors can submit a transcript packet on November 1st and it's considered on time. There is no advantage for um, submitting early um, because they're waiting, you know, schools are waiting anyway for all the school, for all the um, applications to come in. So I think sometimes some people think, okay, if I, if I submit it November 1st, and no, sorry, October 1st, I'm going to get, um, I'm going to get an advantage and, and that's not the case. So please know that as long as the transcript packet is submitted on the deadline date, it is considered on time. If for some reason that your school, you know, one of your college, the colleges wants it, you know, by deadline date, then please make sure that is communicated to um, your counselor. So a lot of schools, a lot of schools are now self-reporting schools. So what this means is um, we do not send anything to a self-reporting school. Basically, um, the student, and this is why we give them a, an unofficial transcript, students are expected to um, submit their own classes, their own grades, their own test scores um, to the colleges, um, to any self-reporting college. So um, please keep that in mind. We don't send anything to self-reporting schools. The only time we will send anything to a self-reporting school is when if your student gets into a self-reporting school and they decide they want to go to that school, then we will then send the final transcript. So it's very important for students to be honest when they um, report the courses and grades because it is gonna be checked once the final transcript comes in. Um, please make sure your student um, puts self-reporting schools on the transcript release form. So even though um, we're not sending anything out to those self-reporting schools, those stu your student still needs to put self-reporting schools on the transcript request form because, again, in case we have to send a final transcript um, at the end of the year, we have that on record um, that we are allowed to do that, that we can, you give them permission for us to send the transcripts to them. Um, Mr. Ronaldo touched base on this. So again, SAT and ACT score as many colleges are now test optional. So what that means basically is that um, the SAT and ACT scores will not affect um, admissions decisions. So it's really a family decision, a student decision, whether or not they want to submit SAT or ACT scores or not. And then the next slide shows um, a website right there that has all of the schools that are test optional schools. Okay, so for letters of recommendation. So um, some of the things to think about when considering sending the letters of recommendation. So first of all, does the college even want a letter of recommendation? So like Mr. Ellis had mentioned, tech doesn't want them. They don't read them. They basically just put them in the trash. So um, it is up to your, it is your student's responsibility to let us know if their school requires a recommendation. Um, so, and, and for instance, if a school requires only two, and I'll give an example, UVA requires a teacher recommendation and a counselor recommendation, 
please make please make sure your student only asks obviously their counselor and then one teacher. I think a lot of students feel is the more you know letters of recommendation they provide the, the college, the better. But my only um, the only thing that I would caution your student against doing that is if let's say they ask five people to um, send a recommendation. Um, and two of them are excellent and three of them might be mediocre, right? So if the first three that come in or first two that come in are the ones from the mediocre person or whatever, um, then those are the ones that are gonna be read and the other ones are gonna be trashed. So we wanna make sure that your student is are asking the two people or whoever many is required by the school that, that can say wonderful things about them and that um, those are the ones that are gonna be read, which is why just make sure to stick to the number that is required. Um, Okay, and then um, and then, how do they want the letters from the certain people? So for instance, um, are they gonna be mailed or are they gonna be electronically given like Subcat Common App? So when your student um, is putting in the recommenders, make sure that they're putting in the recommenders, they're putting in the email address for the people who are gonna be submitting recommendations for them. And then once again, um, secondary school report forms, um, ours, Kid, you know, all colleges take ours, our Lake Braddock one, but if for some reason there's a specific form that they want um, completed during it versus a standard letter, please make sure that your student uh, communicates that with uh, your counselor. So um, on the transfer request form in that Google Doc, there are actual the specific dates for each of the um, the deadline dates of schools. It's generally about four weeks notice. So um, the application for the, the student is like, let's just say again, November 1st, they need to make sure they let us know um, four weeks before November 1st. So like around October 1. But like I said, the specific dates, because it might not be October 1, it might be more like September 28th or something. So please make sure your student is looking at the transit request forms for those specific dates. Those are our internal deadlines, meaning in order for us to get your student's transcript, transcript package out on time, um, we want to make sure that they give us enough notice so that we're able to repair those materials because it is a process and it does it's a lot of pieces that we need to make sure we have. Um, again, in order for us to write a counselor recommendation, we need to make sure that your student um, has completed the three items that you see on there, the student self-evaluation, the parent questionnaire, and the comment form, um, at least two of them. And all of those are Google Docs. Um, we, I posted them on Schoology. Um, they're also found on the Lake Braddock website underneath transcript request forms. Um, and then in Schoology, they're under the senior unit post-secondary materials. So they're Google Docs. We gave this, they gave them, they had access to this as juniors. And so a lot of them have already completed it. But if you have not seen a parent questionnaire Google Doc, um, please make sure that you ask your student um, so that you can fill that out for them. Um, the comment form, I'm going to just touch base real quick because a lot of people get very confused about it. So if your student is asking a particular teacher for a teacher recommendation, um, they're not going to ask that teacher to complete a comment form. The comment form are um, give, is give, should be given to two people who can say wonderful things about your student, but they're not actually providing or a actual letter recommendation for your student. So it could be, um, it could be, you know, if they work, it could be their boss, it could be someone um, like the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts person, um, someone like that they go, you know, a priest or whatever. But just again, as someone who can say great things, but it's not necessarily someone who's going to be um, writing a rec. And that's because we're going to be using those comments in our letter. And so we don't want it to have redundant information where like um, that information is in our letter and it's also in a separate recommendation. And we like to have at least two comment forms, but um, I mean, one's better than zero. So, and then please make sure that your student, if they've done anything over the summer, if they need to update their resume, please have them do that and make sure that gets to us as well. Um, please make sure that your students, when they're asking their recommenders for a uh, letter of recommendation, before they put their email address down, to get the, you know, like for instance, comment app, 
you know, to get that common app portal um, access, please make sure that they're asking the recommender first before they provide their email information. It's just common courtesy so that, that the person is not surprised when they receive the invite. Um, again, I think I said most of this already. Yes. Again, so again, make sure that your student is asking um, for the, the specific number, not like a whole bunch. Um, we want to make sure that those colleges are reading the ones that they want to be read. Um, and then make sure that they are getting the recommendations from their teachers as we are not going to be responsible for sending those out. Okay, so uh, we, we put this slide in here because I think a lot of, again, a lot of students get really anxious, like once they press submit for their application, I think a lot of them think, oh, I'm gonna, I should be able to see a complete package like right away. Like when they look in their college portal, they should be like, see, everything's completed. And the thing is, is that everything comes in pieces and, and the colleges are dealing with thousands of applications. So please make sure that you remember that um, everything takes time to marry on the other end. So it can take up to four weeks for colleges to show that they have a complete transcript package. So please um, remember that. Um, and if for some reason after four weeks, they're still saying it's um, not complete, just let your counselor know. Uh, counselor know or Miss Allen know, and then we can always call the college. If something happens to be missing, your kid will not, your student will not be penalized for that. We will take care of it, and it's not a big deal at all. So please make sure you remember that uh, things do take time, up, and it can take up to four weeks. Make sure that your student is um, checking Naviance. Once they complete transfer request forms for their schools, um, Miss Allen puts them under in Naviance, and it's underneath colleges I'm applying to. So please make sure that your student is checking that and that nothing is missed um, and that all the schools that they said that they were going to apply to are actually underneath colleges that I'm applying to. Um, on Naviance, you can also check to see when the transcript was submitted. So um, a lot of times kids are like, Miss Greer, did you send that transcript out? Transcript out? And I always tell them just to go on Naviance and see when it was submitted. And once again, um, a lot of us have around 80 seniors, so a lot of times we are working up until deadline date. So a lot of times my transcript packages won't be um, sent out until the deadline date, and that is okay. Once again, it is on time. Um, and then your students should be checking, uh, they should be checking their school email uh, if we, because that's how we, we contact them if we ever need to contact them. And they also should be checking uh, the college portal accounts to, and, and to see if, um, if anything's missing from our end. Once again, I still give it up to four weeks, but just keep an eye on that. So just to wrap up like the application process in terms of your students' responsibilities, um, they are responsible for completing the application um, and submitting the application fees. So I, we stress to students not to procrastinate on this because the college application deadlines are very real. and um, Colleges are very serious about that. So um, our stuff can be late, but the kids cannot. The application itself has to be on time. So please make sure that you're um, checking on your student and making sure they're not waiting until 11.45 p.m. the night before an application is due. Because if a whole bunch of other people are doing it at that same time, then we know that uh, internet gets slow and they might not get it submitted on time. Make sure your student is uh, requesting their test scores on, uh, on collegeboard.com for SAT scores or APCT.org for ACT scores, and they're being sent directly to colleges. Again, we don't have any uh, responsibility over that. Um, okay, and then also scholarship deadlines and requirements. Your students should be looking into that if they're wanting to apply to scholarships. And then again, looking on their college portal, portals and making sure that they are um, checking to see if their college and their applications and their transfer packets are complete. Um, so we, we told our students this today, um, we wanna make sure that they are doing everything on their end to help us get their transcript packet out on time. So um, please make sure that your student is adhering to late product deadlines. Um, if a student 
is late on asking us to send out a transcript package to a school. Again, remember it's about a month in advance. If they're late in asking us, unfortunately we can't guarantee that it will be sent out by the deadline date. But however, I, as I said before, they do take our stuff late, but as much as possible, we, of course, we want to be on time. So please make sure that your student is adhering to late product deadlines and that they are not waiting till the last minute to ask us to submit transcript packages to their colleges. Um, so financial aid and scholarships, uh, we recommend that all families apply for a free application for federal student aid, that's the FAFSA. We do recommend that, we strongly recommend it. I think a lot of students feel like they're not gonna get any aid. Everyone gets aid. It might be aid that they might have to pay back, but we always tell kids it doesn't hurt at all for you all to sit down and complete the FAFSA. You never know what your financial situation is gonna be like in a couple months or six months. So please, you can start doing that. You can start filling out the FAFSA starting October 1, and we strongly recommend it. Um, there are some schools actually that require um, them to complete the CSS profile. Um, and that's just another online federal aid, um, another financial aid application that is a little bit more in depth than the FAFSA, but there are some colleges that require that to have, um, to, to be filled out um, as it gives students aid from their own institution. So um, make sure your student is looking to see if the CSS profile is required in order to apply to their school. Um, loans and grants and scholarships, once again, again, no matter your financial situation, everyone's gonna qualify for some type of aid. So loans, you obviously have to pay back. Grants, you don't pay back. Scholarships, you can get um, based on you know academic merit or uh, financial needs based. Some individual colleges, also co colleges have their own um, financial aid as well. So make sure your student looks into that in, on their own college portals. Again, Ms. Hunter um, posts FCPS and Lake Braddock Secondary School scholarships on Naviance. So make sure that your student is checking that. Right now, it's probably not going to be a lot, but around February, March time, that's when the scholarship. Um, scholarship comes out, scholarship applications come out. Um, in the next slide soon, you'll see that there's, you, your kid, your student can do independent research on different financial aid um, search engines. And then again, once again, certain colleges um, may co contact uh, your student directly um, if they call it qualify, qualify for any scholarships at their uh, schools. And this slide is the different types of search engines for like financial aid. Um, and it's, it, you'll be surprised um, how many opportunities there are for a student to apply for financial aid um, and scholarships. So just please make sure that you check out these um, search engines. Um, you just never know. And any kind of aid is worth something. If your student is planning to apply to as a division one or division two athlete to their school, to a school, please make sure that they are um, registering through NCAA Clearinghouse. There is a process, the website is right there. Um, they're responsible for registering online and the NCAA um, Clearinghouse website and then sending their test scores to NCAA when they fill out the uh, transcript request form, they're making sure to put NCAA on their transcript request form so that we can send their transcript out to them. And then if we do sometimes have call, uh, call coaches from different colleges come and ask for a um, transcript. And so in order for your student to give us permission to do that, they just need to make sure they put college coach on the transcript request form so that we can have their permission to give college coaches their transcript when they come visit. And here are just a couple of tips, a few tips for you all as you go through this process with your student. Um, please make sure that you are being open and you're having some real conversations with your students. Um, it's very important, um, especially when it comes to like the financial piece to it too. I, you know, we've had sometimes we <laughs> 
there are times when a student, like if they apply early decision and early decisions binding, and if for some reason the kid gets into the school, but for some reason they can't afford it. Um, I know that I've been asked to, to uh, tell a student they can't go and that and that and, and honestly that's not our job right so please make sure you're having some open real conversations with your students um help them understand the college search process um and and this is their process um you know you're there to support them but please make sure that they take ownership of this um and then when you're thinking about like the different colleges for your student, please, again, make sure that you're thinking like having some, again, realistic and real conversations with them. Like it's important to be supportive, but also to be realistic as well in terms of like the colleges that your student is applying to. Um, uh, make sure that you're, again, keeping your kid on track with the deadlines and what fees are due. Um, celebrate. The successes with them and don't dwell on the disappointments and that's exactly what that means like yes you know there's always more than one way to get to the same um destination so just make sure that you're um keeping an open mind through this process as well um and keep your options open and let's see we already talked about the fafsa and again try not to compare your child child to others i know that sometimes it's hard and I, you know what the, your student it does enough of that on their own when they compare themselves to their peers. So be supportive of them and remember that they're individuals and that um, and not to compare themselves to, to their friends and peers. And once again, you are there for support. You are their biggest cheerleader, but your students should be owning this process and they should be, um, they of course they're gonna get your support, but they should be doing the process. On, uh, on, they should be owning the process. Um, okay, so just a few final words before we close tonight. Um, please remember that we are here for your student and we are also here for your questions from you too as well. So please make sure that you reach out to us if you have any questions about anything, but also encourage your student to reach out to us as well. Um, also, please remember that we are, uh, we even though this is a very big part of our fall, um, deal, you know, dealing with our seniors and all the all the college application process we do have around at least 220 underclassmen as well and the other part of our job doesn't stop so please make sure that this is this is um please be kind and understand that we are doing the best that we can um and that and to be supportive of that please um we do want to make sure that our students know that the application deadlines we prior to prioritize by the deadline date. So we are definitely working on our early decision and early action deadlines first, and then we'll move on to regular. So when we send out our sign up genius, we have told our students that if they're applying early decision or early action with an earlier deadline, that they are to be meeting with us first. Um, and then we will um, we will go from there with the later deadlines. Your student though can always reach out to us anytime. So if your student is applying regular decision and they have questions about the process, they, they're more than welcome to like contact us. We're here for everyone, no matter what the deadline is. Um, make sure that your student is monitoring again, the college websites and their college portals to make sure that uh, their application is complete and nothing is missing. Uh, colleges like to notify students one to two weeks after the deadline. Um, but again, if there's, you still need to give notice, you still need to give some time for everything to marry on the other end. So in general, colleges notify students one to two weeks after deadline, but um, but not always. So just please keep that in mind. And that was just a cute little visual. We thought it was cute, so we included it for a little laugh. <laughs> And I think we are uh, we are big on social media. So if you haven't joined us on Twitter, um, please do. We're also on. We actually also have an Instagram account as well as a Facebook account as well. Um, but thank you for attending. Um, we have some time for some questions. Is that what we're doing, everyone? Or is there anything that I need to? Um, that we need to address from the Padlet that you noticed that a lot of people had questions on.
Lynn, you're doing great. We're still answering a couple follow-up questions in okay. the Padlet. All right, awesome. Okay, so give us just a couple minutes to answer these kind of wrap-up ones and we should be good. Can I answer some as I see them that if they haven't been answered, do you mind? Does anyone care? Oh, it's right there. No, go ahead. Okay, no, I just I just saw it answered. Um, So it's likely that somebody's going to answer this on the Padlet about how the parent um, questionnaire is being used. I see that um, being answered. I would just put in there, um, parent. this is the opportunity for parents to brag about their kids. And it's a great opportunity um, to, you know, kids sometimes don't, aren't really comfortable saying a lot of great things about themselves and their self-evaluation. And so when we have parent questionnaires uh, that give good feedback about things that their students have done and, and skills they have, and great characteristics they have, it really helps us to add that into the letter um, and, you know, kind of, you know, creatively weave that into the letter. Um, so that's, that's why it's really important for us to use that piece from parents. It's an opportunity to brag about your kiddos. Um, someone asked, will this presentation be shared on Schoology? Yes, I will be posting it on Schoology tomorrow. And we'll also be um, sending the slides out via email as well. Hey team, did you see this where it says, there's a question that says Common App only allows 15 max classes to be filled in, which class should be, we skip? Uh, did y'all know that? Cause I don't believe I knew that. Um, I think I would need some clarification on what they mean by classes to be filled in. Like when you, in Common App, I guess there, are you, I guess in Common App, they're putting in their courses from their transcript. I need to look into that because I don't. The schools will also know the courses when we upload the transcripts. So they'll see all the courses at that point in time. Yes. And the grades in what they're taking their senior year. That's a good point. Thank you, Ms. Samick Smith. And I think I would say if there was a limited number of classes you could put in, you want to put in the ones that are most reflective of your academic rigor and what you're looking to pursue in college. Um, one of the questions is, do students need their highest, send their highest score if they took the SAT twice or the last SAT score they took? If it, it, I mean, if they send all the scores that they've ever done, the college is going to take the higher score. It doesn't matter. So it's not, there's not there's sometimes they super score them also. Right. So yeah, exactly. So there's no disadvantage of sending all the scores, honestly. And if colleges, if the students don't do well on the SAT, don't let that discourage them because they then colleges know that they have a student that works their behind off and they like that. So um, some people just are not good testers, but they are hard workers.
FAFSA starts receiving uh, applications on October 1st. Um, and a deadline, I, does FAFSA have a, have a deadline team? I don't think so. There's I mean, not a specific right. deadline. Yeah. It's just what I would suggest is the sooner you can get that done, the yeah. more money, the more the money is available. Right. So one question about the Common App, um, there's not a way to get a printout before, but the student has to doesn't have to submit everything at once. They can put some information, save, open it up another day, save, so they don't have to submit everything um, in one session. 